Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Some of you already know that, but now we all know. So, chapter 4. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into the rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day of his wives. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some enter therein, they to whom it was first preached entered, and not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even unto the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto his eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feelings, our, our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find the grace to help in time of need. Plus concludes today for you. Good morning. Welcome to Team Course Community Bible Church. Glad everybody can make it. Those who are listening in, welcome. Today we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. And our message today, there is no rest without God. No rest without God. Let's bow our heads and our hearts as we enter into prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We are very thankful today that your hand will be upon us. As we come to worship you, to pray to you, and now, Father, to listen to you. Every time we study and read your word, you are speaking to our heart. Help us to receive these truths and also the conviction of your Holy Spirit to live them out. We thank you for them. Bless your word as it goes forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, restlessness. The restlessness of man without God. This is the continuing series from last week. Christ is our rest. And what a wonderful truth for the Christian family. You're going through something today. We heard a testimony of four years of uh, our dear uh, Jennifer had to go through some very horrible depression. I've been through depression earlier on in my life, a couple years. I couldn't explain it, restlessness, and yet I had the, I still had the joy of the Lord. I knew that I was saved. I had assurance. But it was tough, and some of the trials that we go through, uh, we don't understand sometimes. There's a restlessness today in the world because of the uh, COVID-19 virus, because of the threats of some countries uh, against one another, uh, Iran and the Middle East versus uh, 
Israel, we know that that's a sign of the last days. And each of us have to go through some personal, uh, physical issues, some of them terminal, some of them chronic. We went in our prayer time today and we're praying for some of these. Restlessness in the heart of man, apart from God. Today we're going to talk about how we can have rest in God. And uh, I'd like to share, start off with what St. Augustine said. And he's uh, famous for this, a famous quote. And it says, You, God, have made us for yourself. And our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. And that's a great quote. That could be in the scripture. It's a true uh, statement. God made us for Him. You know, listen, there's a connection between the child of God and God. There's a connection. And if we stretch it, if we get away from God, then uh, we can become restless. But if we stay with God and we follow His Word, then we will have peace and joy and rest, even as we go through the battles of life. A.W. Tozer writes, Apart from God, we thrash about desperately trying to cobble together a sense of identity and purpose. Struggling to find our place belonging in this world. We know not who we are or whose we are or who we are destined to become. And it is only upon returning to the one who brought forth our hearts from nothing that we end our grinding search and find rest in the living God who is both the beginning and the end of our journey. Only in Him do we find identity, our purpose, our destiny. These are truths worthy of our remembering. Many of the ancient questions regarding the what and why of our spiritual lives are beautifully answered in the Westminster Shorter Catechism. I've repeated this myself before. Now the question we have before we read that is, what is the chief end of man? What is your chief end? What is your purpose in life? Glorify God, he says. And the Westminster Shorter Catechism says this, man's chief end is to glorify God and what? Enjoy Him forever. Can you imagine the peace of God that passes understanding? And uh, that's what God has for us. John Piper said it this way, the chief end of man is to glorify God by enjoying Him forever. Do you know how to enjoy God? You know, today as uh, we were here, and I thank uh, the Lord for uh, Tony and uh, Wayne and Rhonda as they led the music, and it was more than singing songs, wasn't it? It was worship. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. To hear those words usually brings emotion. How can we see an invisible God? He isn't. He is invisible. Uh, by faith. And then by His presence. Because the Bible says that where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am present. And so there's something special that God calls us together so that there's two or three or more because He wants to manifest Himself to us as we worship Him. For those who don't place a high uh, standard in their lives for uh, church and worship, they're missing out on God's best. Uh, it's like going without a meal, isn't it? How many meals have you missed? Well, personal application. If you've experienced the restlessness of which Augustine and Tozer wrote about, take heart. God knows your deepest longings and promises to draw near to those who draw near to Him. What verse is that? I've quoted it a few times in the past month. James 4, 8. What does it say? Draw near unto God and He will what? Draw near to you. Now we, we 
quoted that, and we know that, but are we experiencing that? God wants us to draw near to Him. You know, I was uh, talking with uh, Shaquille, I bring him up a lot because we have a lot of Bible studies, but uh, we were talking about how that um, if we are going through some uh, assault, satanic attack, guess what? We've got God. <laughs> if you're saved, you have God. Fear not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, nobody get past his rod and his staff. One day those longings will be completely filled for in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22, it says God will come and dwell with us. Those are in the last days. What, what about right now? Uh, Frank just read uh, some verses from Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 14. I want to go over them quickly. And I also passed out some sheets and we're going to address what the Bible says about how God will manifest Himself and give us the rest that we need. Starting with verse 1, this is a great passage here. And it's, I'll give you a little background here as the, the writer of Hebrews is also giving us a background of the Old Testament saints, how that they were delivered from Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. So we see types in the Old Testament that are meant to be fulfilled in the New Testament in Christ and in the church. And so we see these types and uh, uh, we're going to read uh, through this passage. It says this. It says that the, the children of Israel, as God had rescued them from the world and performed miracle after miracle and provided for them, wasn't enough. They still had hardened hearts. Now some of us look and say, well, if I was there, well, you weren't. But you're here. And how many of us trust God through the uh, problems we face? And in the meantime, listen, we don't just come to God when we have a need. We have a spiritual existence that we're supposed to be living. What does the Bible tell us in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18? Be not drunk with wine, which is in excess, but be filled by what? The Holy Spirit. Our life should be a spiritual life. Well, how can you do that? We're, in, we're, in the, we're living in our bodies. Uh, by yielding right of way. Be filled. You know what the word filled means? Controlled. And that doesn't mean that you lose your mind and you lose control of your mind. But it does mean you yield all the areas of your life to Him. And then in uh, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16. Walk what? In the Spirit and you what? Not fulfill. Not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Do we see what kind of life is available for us today? You know, all the worrying that we may do, that we avoid God, even though He's waiting. The verse we started off with, James chapter 4 and verse 8, draw near unto God, He will draw near unto to you. Don't you know He waits? There are some that say, yes, I will find that. So that when you find a very difficult situation, maybe the doctor tells you uh, you have a terminal disease or that you your condition is fine, or maybe you've lost someone, that you don't need to be in, in despair. Somebody is there. God is there. And by faith we can hold His hand. Remember the verse? Hebrews 1, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, 1 and, and 6. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So by faith, I grab a hold of my Father's hand. By faith is the substance and the evidence of things yet to come. And then, um, uh, they that come into God must believe that He is. So the preface to salvation is believing, and also the preface for answered prayer is believing. Must believe that He is, that He's a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek Him. So when we come to this passage, we see a people here that might remind us of ourselves or of the church. 
of Jesus Christ in America or the world. That is complaining about things, upset about things, angry about things, upset about, you know, uh, situations, circumstances. Circumstances should not affect us in a negative way if we have Christ. There's a verse in the Bible, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting what? All of your cares upon Him. Why? Because He cares about you. He cares. you got to find that out. Verse 1, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into His rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. I want to find that rest, don't you? Not only do I want to find it, I want to live in it. Then when I go through these problems, my goodness, I'm still resting. And I'm growing through my trials. Verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. The gospel was preached in the Old Testament, yes. If they were to be saved, they were to be saved by grace through faith, believing in the Redeemer. They were looking for the Redeemer for salvation. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with what? Faith. And them that heard it. Verse 3, 4, We which have believed, listen, do enter into rest. And that word rest, by the way, and I, I'm, I'm going to say more about this when we get to uh, uh, verse 9, because that's the great uh, verse I always quote. This rest is a Sabbath rest, by the way. We'll talk about that in a future study. That for the church, we have a moment-by-moment -moment rest available to us. It's in Christ. Do you want that rest? Um, I think that uh, I've said this last week, but we are nothing without rest. We can't do anything unless we're rested. For we have believed to enter into rest, as he said, as I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So they could have entered into the rest that God had provided to take them an 11 day journey from uh, Mount Sinai or the land of Horeb to the promised land. 11 days. But it says, from, from the found, not before the foundation of the world, but from the foundation of the world, I had provided a rest. Okay. Um, Canaan was a type of rest for the Jews. And he had promised them the promised land. Spiritually, Canaan was a heavenly rest. When we read about it, Canaan in the scriptures, we're talking about our Canaan. Across the Jordan, there are songs we sing. And that's typical or a type of heaven and coming to our resting place. Listen, uh, as far as our labor is concerned today, we are to be busy about the Lord's work. We are to be soldiers. We are to take our spiritual armor. And today we are to fight the battles. And we are in battles. And if you don't have the spiritual armor on, how do you get the spiritual armor on? First thing in the morning in prayer, right? First thing in the morning in prayer, be conscious. You know, you're going to face the battles of the day. So some of us will wait, you know, until whenever it's convenient to pray. Maybe it'll be lunchtime. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll be uh, dinner time or after dinner. Huh? And, and then we have a little bit of prayer. Well, you know, uh, what happened during the first uh, eight hours of your, of your life, you need to put on the spiritual armor of God. Confess your sin. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Boy, you are ready. And that's every day. Okay? Spiritually, Canaan was a heavenly rest, the rest that we as believers have. Listen, in Christ Jesus, we have it available. The Jews wandered 40 years in the wilderness after God delivered them from Egypt. And that's a type of the world. All right. Verse 4, For he spoke in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. So there's the picture. God worked for six days. I think he was pretty busy. The whole universe was created. You were created. Every animal was created. Everything that was made, he created. Six days. And then it said he had a Sabbath. He rested. Now we have a Sabbath. Our Sabbath is a rest. And it's in Christ. Christ did all the work. And when He said at the cross, it is finished, guess what? It was done. He had provided salvation 
He had provided for us a rest in Him. A Sabbath rest. And we'll talk about this in the future too. Why don't we meet on Saturdays? Is Saturday the Sabbath? Yes. And under the Old Testament, Mosaic Law, the Jewish family was commanded that they could only uh, walk so far, that they couldn't light fires, that they so many things that they couldn't uh, do. And one person who was doing some work uh, as they were traveling those 40 years that it records in the Scriptures, the Old Testament, that they took him and they stoned him for doing work on the Sabbath. God is holy. He's also just. If we don't do His will, then that, that's unbelief. That's a picture for us. Listen, in the New Testament, we have a rest in Christ. Listen, moment by moment, 24-7. Verse 4, For He spoke in a certain place on the seventh day. God did rest from all His works. Verse 5, And in this place, again, if they should enter into mine, that word in the Greek, rest is Sabbath. Enter into my wrath. Sabbath. We're not talking about just Saturdays. There is nowhere in the Scriptures that transferred the, the Sabbath over to Sunday. The Roman Catholic Church did that. Many Protestant churches, they uh, think that the Sunday is the Sabbath and all of the, uh, some of the uh, same connection is found to the Sabbath so that, you know, you can't uh, do this, you can't do that. And the Bible doesn't say that. We get a, we're resting in Christ on Saturday, on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Moment by moment. Verse 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter into it, they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Do you hear that? They did not enter into it. They were restless. As a result, they were murmuring. They were cantankerous. They were gossipers. They murmured against God. They had no rest. And by the way, not a single one who was 20 and, 20 and above entered into Canaan alive. Some of the bodies went to carry it in and bury. Uh, but they didn't enter in because of their unbelief. Except for Joshua and Cain. Uh, they were faithful. And we're talking about uh, 623,000. That meant that there was uh, at least 100 funerals a day during those 40 years. Okay. Here's, here's a verse. Isaiah 57, 20, and listen to this. Isaiah 57, 20, but the wicked are like the restless sea. The wicked. For it cannot rest, and its waters cast up mire and dirt. Watch the waves as they come in, the tumultuous waves. And they incessantly they continue to come in, and they stir up, they come up, they stir up whatever's beneath it, the dirt and mire. Instead, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament that they hardened their hearts and became murmurers against God. They hardened their hearts. And they were the people of God, supposed to be. Verse 7, again, he limited the certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice. How do we hear his voice? Is it audibly, like I'm speaking right now? Very rare. And how rare? Not in my lifetime. Can God speak to someone? Yeah, he did to Paul, the apostle. But don't expect that he is going to audibly speak to you except for on the perp that he's got a divine purpose for you, like, like to a prophet or something like that. However, he speaks to us every day through his what? Word. Every day. Are you listening? Are you reading his word? And so he said, verse 7 again, he limited the certain day, saying to David, today after so long a time as it is said, today if you will hear his voice, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. Jesus given them rest. What do you think? Jesus? Back then? Was he there? Yes. He wasn't called Jesus. He was the Son of God. But it says here that if he would have given them rest, then they would not have spoken of another day. There remain, here it is, verse 9. And this is where we are going to complete, 9 and 10. There remaineth therefore a rest. And again, that word is Sabbath. There remaineth a Sabbath. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you are supposed to be meeting on Saturdays. 
we'll talk about uh, the importance of the Sabbath. We'll talk about the Lord's Day, which is Sunday. We'll talk about the difference in what God has for the church. We'll talk about that another time. Anyway, that's the word Sabbath. There remaineth therefore a Sabbath to who? The people of God to the church. It's a moment by moment Sabbath that we have in Christ through the through what? Through the finished work of Calvary. Through his finished work, he did it, he fulfilled the law, he was Adam. The Bible says the second man, he was the last Adam, and that was 1 Corinthians 15. When you went to the cross, when I went to the cross, we were nailed with Him. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Galatians 2.20, our last verse. Or no, I, I, I'm sorry, I've got to read verse 11 too. For he that has entered into his Sabbath, moment by moment, day by day, Somebody asked you, do you keep the Sabbath on Saturday? Yes, I do. And on Sunday, and on Monday, and on Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If I'm not, then I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm hardening my heart. Because I am in Christ. And that's His promise here in verse number 10. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from what? His own works. My works cannot please God. Nothing I can do can please Him. I have to yield to Christ. It must be Christ in me doing this. Therefore, I need to be walking in the Spirit, according to the Spirit. How do you do that? Boy, first thing you get up. You're in prayer. You're yielding right away. And you're being filled when you are yielding right away to Him. You confess your sin. You come into His presence to guide you throughout that day, and He will. And number, verse 11, this is it. Let us therefore, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. It's, listen, this is a labor of faith. Exercising faith, growing faith. To grow it. To mature in the faith. To walk in the Spirit. Let us therefore enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of what? Unbelief. Listen. If you know the Word of God and you don't do the Word of God, that's unbelief. That's why, that's why God took Moses' life. Because Moses didn't do what God said. God said, speak to the rock. And he smote it twice. And that was a picture of Christ. And Christ was only smote once. And so God loved Moses, bringing him back, I believe, during the tribulation period. He was there at the transfiguration. He's one of the two olive trees the Bible speaks about in heaven. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 8, it said, Moses failed God, and it was called unbelief. Why? Because he didn't do what God said. It's not believing that God means what He says. Listen, if you don't do the Word of God, you don't keep His Word, you don't keep His commandments, it's unbelief. And at that moment that uh, it's uh, sending you away, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man should fall into the same example of one day. Okay, I gave you these sheets. This is as much a Sunday school lesson as anything. Without rest, we are nothing. And you go through these. Christ gives us peace and the verse. Christ gives us security and the verses. Christ will deliver us and the verse. Christ promises to us and the verses. And Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our righteousness. These promises are not for just anyone. Everyone must genuinely be born again to lay claim to them. And if we are out of fellowship with our Heavenly Father, our sin will hinder this rest. Do you desire His rest? If you do, don't be like the Old Testament saints who unbelief never found that rest and even march into Canaan land. Only those who were younger uh, and of course they learned by their example to believe in God. And how about you? We need to learn to rest in Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity we've had today to study your word and to find out that the Bible says Jesus is our rest. Jesus is our Sabbath. 
How can the church miss out on that? We don't hear that lesson that often. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Sabbath, moment by moment. Help us to enter into that rest on a daily basis by faith. Believe We bow before you and praise you and thank you just now. In Jesus' name. And now, before we share in the Lord's